What's going on, everybody? Welcome to San Francisco, California, my second home and home to pretty much every tech company you've never heard of. And today we're going to find out just how an app is made. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Scott Moss. I've been a software engineer here in the Bay Area for pretty much the last decade now transitioning over to be a investor where I work with entrepreneurs and engineers all the time. So trust me when I tell you, I know exactly how an app is made. I think an app works by um, coding. Somebody has to sit down and put together numbers, shapes to create something that works. Uh, there are a team of people that uh, uh, in English is difficult. I know how it works for the uh, logo. Come on, man, I'm a developer. We need genius people like you and I and the cameraman <laughs> and a team, right? Yep. Get done and then uh, make money together. So at its core, an app is really just a bunch of texts in a file that a computer reads and does something with. And if you think about computers, they're more than what's obvious. We're talking things like phones, TVs, actual computers like your laptop, a gaming console. Even cars these days are considered computers all of these things can run apps. And to be able to talk to a computer, you have to learn its language. Just like when you visit another country and they have their own native language, you need to know the language of the computer. And there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different computer languages. An app also has something called data. Now data is really just information that describes things. They're like traits. For instance, a trait for me might be that I'm tall, uh, I'm a man. I, I am an engineer. I live in California. These are all traits. That is my data. Right now you're watching this video on YouTube. YouTube sees you represented as just data, your account, all the things that represent you, your viewing habits, the device that you're on, your location, and all your settings. All of that would be the data that describes you. And lastly, when combining that data with the text files that are code, you need a design because the design is probably the most important part. So the job of an app really is to take something beautiful, like a design that a designer made, something static, and make it work, make it real. Because before that, a design is really just a blueprint for like one of these buildings. It doesn't do anything. Not until you add code and run it on a computer, then it works. So to summarize, an app is just a bunch of text files that have code in them, uh, assets for logos, images, and things like that, and then a bunch of data to make it dynamic. So the remaining question is, how does that folder actually get to your computer? Well, that just depends on your computer. For a website, your browser is actually an app that lets you explore other apps that you can visit with things like URLs or links. That's actually what you're doing. So for instance, going to gmail.com, that's an app. Or going to apple.com, that's another app. For a smartphone app, you actually have to download them yourself in an app store. But it's no different. What you're actually downloading is a folder of text files, assets, and data. Your smartphone reads those files as instructions and then shows it to you on a screen with a beautiful design. Every person actually has the same app that you download on your phone. What makes it different is the data. So what you see on your app and what everyone sees on their app is gonna be completely different because the traits and the information is unique to them. This is why you need to be online to use most apps. It's also why you need to sign up and sign in so an app knows what data to send your computer specifically. Imagine logging into your bank after you worked so hard and saved up all this money just to see that you have a zero balance because the bank decided to show you someone else's data. That would be terrifying. This is why data is crucial and it allows engineers to write one app but make it work for everybody. So building an app is actually quite difficult and things go wrong all the time. In fact, multiple times a day, things go wrong. So how do teams of engineers and designers know when things are going wrong? Well, most apps have other pieces of code in them that will tell these teams when something happens, like when you try to send that tweet out and it didn't, or when you try to like that image on Instagram and it didn't like, well, guess what? They know about it and they just try to prioritize and fix those things as they come up. But writing code and making an app doesn't end when you actually have the app on your phone. Engineers have to continuously build and work on the app and keep it from breaking from people like us. So who actually is sitting down and writing hundreds and hundreds of thousands of lines of code just so you can upload a selfie today? Well, 
a bunch of folks, really. We have engineers that write the code. We have UI and UX designers that make it look beautiful and product managers that ensure that everyone's working on the right things. Building an app is a huge process that requires tons of planning and coordination. Uh, so I'll actually be making a video in the future going into more detail. So if you're interested in that, subscribe now and be notified when I release it. The future and honestly, the present is already dominated by software. Having a basic understanding of how technology works will benefit you greatly as we continue to create amazing things using software and computers. Now, you don't need to be an engineer to actually understand how things work, just like you don't really need to be a mechanic to know how an engine works. But if you get a flat tire, you better know how to change it. The same is true with technology. So if you're interested in getting into tech, whether that's being an engineer like myself or an artist that designs things, or maybe even a product manager whose job is to make sure that we're working on the right things, then check out this video that I made where I talk about all those different career paths. In the meantime, if you love this video, please leave a like. It's gonna help the channel. Subscribe for all the stuff I'm gonna be doing in the future. And I promise I'm gonna be doing some crazy stuff that you're gonna like. Uh, hit me up on Twitter if you got any suggestions, but until then, I'll catch you next time.